station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Straight ahead on DC News Now at 9, a 9-year-old girl is shot in southeast Washington. What the commander in the area is saying about the gun violence. Plus, Prince William County police make an arrest in a deadly hit and run what their investigation revealed. And if you haven't filed your taxes just yet, you still have a few days left. We're stretching your dollars with tips that could save you a headache and much more. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 9. I'm Annalisa Gale. Let's start with a look at what's ahead this week for your work week with meteorologist Scott Sumner. Waiting for some rain to move on in here, Annalisa, as we'll see here, uh, as you'll note, quite nicely. We had some beautiful weather this afternoon. Yes, there were some clouds out there, but people out and about enjoying the 80 degree temperatures that were in the area. And uh, of course, we're not going to be seeing that tomorrow because a front's moving through tonight. And you can see with our radar here, some of those showers already making their way into the western portions of our viewing area out towards Garrett County across that line. And as a matter of fact, our future cast picks up on that. As you'll see here, our future radar has more rain overspreading Garrett County into Allegheny County here over the next hour or so and through the, some of the mountains. Eventually, this rain will overspread and get into the D.C. region. I'll talk about a timeline for that and what to expect for your Monday coming up. All right, thanks, Scott. New tonight, a nine-year-old girl is recovering following a shooting in southeast D.C. this afternoon. Police responded to these apartments along Douglas Place around 4 o'clock this afternoon. That's where they found the child with that gunshot wound in a red SUV. The apartments are located next to the Discover Academy. Police do not believe the child was targeted. It's disheartening. It's disheartening and, and again, it's just outrageous. I'm outraged and I continue to say that the, the community should be outraged as well. Our no arrests have been made in that case. Also new tonight, DC police are investigating a shooting at an apartment building in Northwest Washington, not far from the Watergate building. Police responded to the Columbia Plaza apartments in Northwest just before 3 p.m. Neighbors tell us they heard gunshots from inside a gym after an argument between two men. Police say the victim was conscious when they arrived. The building houses many students who attend George Washington University. They received alerts from the university about what happened. He called me and said, hey, what's going on? Try to get yourself inside, uh, shelter in place. And um, yeah, it seemed uh, among my friends that most of them are, were pretty concerned, pretty worried. And police are still looking for suspects in that case as well. D.C. police are also investigating a shooting that left one person dead in the district early this morning. They say that the shooting happened shortly before 2 a.m. in the 1900 block of Good Hope Road in southeast Washington. The victim has been identified as 33-year-old Latanya Campbell. She was found inside a vehicle on V Street in southeast. A $25,000 reward is being offered for information leading to an arrest. And developing in Maryland, a body was found in the area that a 10 year old girl was reported missing in Charles County. Sheriff Troy Berry shared the update on Twitter this afternoon around noon. He said the body was found near Turner Road and Covington Road. That's where his deputies have been searching for 10 year old Madeline Wallace, who is autistic. A medical examiner's office will confirm the identity of the person that was found. At this time, investigators do not suspect foul play. And in Virginia, Prince William County police have arrested a woman in connection to a deadly hit and run. They say it happened just before 1030 on Saturday night on Sudley Road near Portsmouth Road, Norborosis Bustos. Now accused of hitting a pedestrian who was crossing nearby outside of the crosswalk. At the time, they say she was driving a 2004 Dodge Ram. She's charged with felony hit and run. The victim has not been identified at this time. Police do not believe speed alcohol or drugs were factors. Also developing, developing now in Virginia, Fairfax County police are looking for the public's help with identifying men that may be related to a death investigation. We're told a 33 year old woman was found dead in her car on Thursday in the parking lot of Mount Vernon Hospital on Holland Road. Well, police have now determined that she suffered a gunshot wound to her upper body. She has, was identified as Brenda Guerrero, who was from Alexandria. And at this time, her official cause of death is unknown, but police are now searching for two men who they say parked their vehicle before be parked her vehicle before she was found dead. Anyone with information is asked to reach out to the county's crime solvers hotline. 
And right now in Frederick County, the sheriff's office is seeing some changes following its leader's indictment in recent court appearance. DC News Now's Anae Simmons has an update on who will take over the sheriff's duties and the community's re response. Chief Deputy Colonel David Benjamin will take over temporarily for Sheriff Chuck Jenkins. Benjamin became the chief deputy in 2006 and oversees day-to-day -day operations of law enforcement and the Corrections Bureau. Jenkins announced on Friday, April 14th, that he would take a leave of absence after he was accused of conspiring to purchase machine guns illegally. Frederick residents Jordan Clayton and Naya Evans say that the news did not come as a surprise. So oh, I just feel like it's pretty typical police behavior doing something hypocritical like that. Clayton says moving forward, he wants to see more honesty within the office. Yeah, I don't know much about the, that person, um, but hopefully they can be transparent with the community and just do a better job. That's all we're asking. He also says Jenkins should resign. I don't know if I would say that he needs to like lose pension or anything like that, but I don't think he should be in that position anymore. The NAACP of Frederick County released a statement on Facebook saying they are hoping a trial date will be set quickly for Jenkins. Reporting in Frederick, Maryland, Anna Simmons, DC News Now. Well, developing now, a shooting at a Sweet 16 birthday party in Alabama left at least four people dead and multiple others injured. Maddie Beer Temple from our sister station has reaction from the community. The shooting happened about 1030 Saturday night at Mahogany Masterpiece behind me. Law enforcement have confirmed four people were killed and a multitude of others injured. Dadeville Police Chief Jonathan Floyd asks for prayers and that people not let this define Dadeville. What we've dealt with is something that no community should have to endure. The DJ at the party last night shared what he saw happened. Keenan Cooper arrived about 945 and heard comments about someone having a gun. He says someone said if you have a gun, you need to leave. He says he noticed no one left and about an hour later shots rang out. Pretty scary. Um, I just had to try to make sure everybody around me was safe. So I put a couple people under the table in front of me because the shots was ringing off behind me. Cooper says there was no fight leading up to the shooting. As far as he could tell, he says he thinks the gun was inside and the shooting started from within, but says he couldn't see that well because the lights were off. Cooper says he's not sure what happened with the shooter. Uh, I don't know. There was multiple cities here. The surrounding area, so something was probably bound to happen anyway. The superintendent of Tallapoosa County Schools says there will be counseling made available for students in all schools tomorrow. We will make every effort to comfort those children and don't lose sight of the fact that those are the ones most impacted by this situation. Alia Sergeant Jeremy Burkett said anyone with tips is asked to call their tip line at 1-800-392-8011 or email sbi.investigations at alia.gov. Now, law enforcement did not take questions at a press conference this morning, but said there is no risk to the public at this time. We'll keep you updated with more information as it becomes available. Reporting in Dadeville, Maddie Beer Temple, back to you. Right now, both blue and red states are discussing gun control as similar measures continue to stall in Congress. Washington correspondent Jesse Turner looks at the new state legislation leaders hope to see at the federal level. We don't have to live like this, and today we are showing we are not going to anymore. Yes. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed new gun bills into law Thursday, two months after a shooter killed three students on Michigan State's campus. The whole community was terrorized. The laws set new storage requirements for guns and ammunition in homes and expand background checks to all gun sales. Right now, only pistols require a background check to purchase, but long guns and shotguns do not. That doesn't make any sense. Whitmer, a Democrat, will also soon sign a so-called red flag measure into law. And Tennessee Governor Bill Lee, a Republican, is calling on his state's legislature to send a similar bill to his desk. A person that has shown that they are a real threat to themselves or to others, that individual should not have access to firearms. After last month's mass shooting at a private Christian school in Nashville, Lee also signed an executive order Tuesday to strengthen background checks on gun purchases. Power! Power! To the people! 
State Representative Justin Pearson was officially sworn back in Thursday after he and another black Democrat were expelled from the Republican-controlled State House for leading a gun violence protest. Pearson believes the outpouring of support for their reinstatements led to the governor's recent actions. Victory is ours! These leaders acknowledge the efforts in their states come alongside another mass shooting this week in Kentucky, where a gunman killed five people at a Louisville bank. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. All right, Scott. Well, I've been hitting the tracks a lot more recently, probably because the weather is so nice. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people getting out and about enjoying the nice weather. We were into the 80s today in D.C. 73 right now, mostly cloudy skies across the region. And uh, again, you can see the numbers, how warm and toasty they were this afternoon. 82 all the way out towards Cumberland. Speaking of Cumberland, we're going to be uh, seeing some rain showers come on your doorstep, if not now, or in the next hour or so. But 80 degree and 70 degree temperatures are not going to be a, a thing uh, happening tomorrow because we are going to see a cold front move on through and drop our temperatures significantly here in the D.C. region. Although when I say that, the average high should be 68 degrees, so we're going to be falling back down to normal where we should be. But look at this, we spike right back up towards the 80s by the end of the week. All right, this is what I'm talking about. You can see out towards the west, close to Cumberland, you're seeing some showers along uh, Interstate 68 out of uh, 66 out there, I should say. Uh, oh no, 68, 68, that's 60, 66 is right here in Virginia. 68 is out towards the west. And there is some shower activity uh, just coming into play here, but a little wider view as we pan and tilt the view. You can see a line of storms which have some wind, have a history of some wind along with it that is now just crossing out of West Virginia and into Western Virginia. So we'll be out watching that line. Uh, roughly it's about 121 miles to the west, the beginning of that line uh, from the district. So probably another couple of hours, three or four hours around the midnight hour is where we should start to see some shower activity and maybe some gusty winds picking up across the region here. Showers and some storms tonight, clearing a cooler Monday, still breezy Tuesday and warming right back up as I showed you there late when, uh, late week. We'll break it all down again with that seven day coming up in a little bit.